Hello, my friends, and welcome back to Alien Protocols, the Advanced Protocols Data Project. I was not going to <clears throat> start this video uh, with what I'm about to, but I'm going to do it anyway. I'm kind of just sick of it. Um, <clears throat> for three weeks, I've been pretty silent on this stuff, and I wasn't going to mention any of this stuff, but lately I found out more things, and I'm just kind of upset. Um, uh, to make a long story short, my rights, my constitutional rights are being violated and have been violated. And it sounds just wacky saying that or conspiratorial saying that, but it's the truth. <clears throat> my mail has been intercepted, private um, ground mail. I sent FedEx ground to people and they have not received what I have sent them. I have um, had a friend send me personal stuff that's not even related to UFO stuff and I have not received it and it was sent over two weeks ago. Um, and other things, and it just pisses me off. And I just, you know, I'm a cooperative guy. Um, I got visited a few weeks ago by some people, and I was, I'm a very cooperative person, and I've got nothing to hide. I'm doing nothing wrong. <clears throat> and I'm sure my electronics are under some sort of surveillance. You know, it's logical if I'm dealing with, uh, you know, UFOs and, you know, advanced propulsion and power systems and camouflage systems and, so just on that basis alone, not including the accuracy of past remote viewings and other things, there's no doubt that, you know, there's a possibility that I would be electronically monitored. Everyone's electronically monitored. If you know anything about the uh, programs of the NSA and other companies within the U S government, not companies, but agencies. Um, but to have my mail fucked with is a different level and it pisses me off and I have a choice of being the lion or the lamb. And if I choose to be the lion, I spend a lot of my energy fighting and you know, da, 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 da. And that just takes me away from my path. And every minute I spend on that stuff takes me away from my path, which may be what they want. But, um, you know, it just pisses me off and I'm not going to fight. I was going to fight and be the lion and use all my different resources available to me. But why? Why do that? Why spend my time? Why not use that energy and jujitsu it into um, greater things? So that's what we're going to do. But I wanted to let you guys know. I wanted you to be apprised of what's going on. I was told even kind of menacingly not to communicate with a certain UFO investigator, a well-known one. And uh, <clears throat> anyway, it is what it is. And it just, if someone, if I would have heard someone else say all the stuff, wacky stuff that's happened to me and our group in the past couple of months, I would just be like, bullshit, that's like wacky bullshit. That doesn't happen really to people. Um, or that person, you know, is mentally fucked up somehow. But when it happens, it happens. You realize, wow, that's weird and real <laughs> and very surreal, actually. Anyway, a lot of stuff has been surreal lately, but when you deal with this topic and you deal with the mysteries and you deal with really edge science and really edge understandings, um, you're going to deal with a lot of this stuff, I would presume. But I'm not afraid of dealing with edge phenomena and edgy things. Um, or this whole project started as the advanced data project based on the protocols to test our location, location X, as the first location with the scientific data and equipment we've started to accumulate and the cool scientific team we have and um, bring the evidentiary bar for a repeatable occurrence to a new evidentiary level. And when we get all of our funding together and multiple cameras and our scientific equipment and stuff, you know, we'll be able to do more of that. And uh, it was interesting thinking about our location X and Skinwalker Ranch and a lot of these other UFO hotspots how they have a lot of reoccurring themes, but specifically I wanted to go over the reoccurring themes at um, our farm and Location X. I mean, I mean our farm, Location X, and Skinwalker Ranch, excuse me. Both have a huge history of weird legends and native legends and stories and native incidents and all of that stuff. Both Skinwalker Ranch and Location X have, has a big history of that. Um, both have a, a similar geological feature. Both have a magnetic anomaly, and that anomaly is a reduction in the um, electromagnetic field in that area. 
Um, there's a very substantial geological ridge that runs perpendicular to uh, Skinwalker Ranch. And the same is true with the Location X, our farm. There's a very substantial geological ridge that's well known. In fact, it was named by the natives. And um, Skinwalker Ranch also has this dark valley that they talked about on Hunt for the Skinwalker. And uh, we have a dark valley in that ridge. And in fact, in that ridge, uh, the dark valley has these caves where even in the middle of the summer with a hundred degree temperature outside, there's ice in these uh, caves. It's pretty cool. Um, both locations, the Uinta uh, Valley and uh, Location X, uh, has a uh, big UFO history, very well known. In fact, our location, Location X, may have a bigger history than Skinwalker's history of UFOs. Um, there's also a, a lot of stories of portals and multidimensional effects and portally mists and smoky mists and portally things like that at Skinwalker Ranch and at this location. In fact, the natives named um, the area something that means smoky mist. Um, and I've seen all of this stuff at Location X, all of these things, um, including you know the light anomalies and the craft and weird, just also a whole wide variety of weird shit and phenomena weird shit. Um, here's one of the things I have not seen yet is Bigfoot. I am... Uh, not a huge Bigfoot believer. I keep the door open for the possibility, but personally, I'm not a Bigfoot believer. Um, but one day, one could come fucking crashing out of the woods, and I guess I would have to believe in. But um, even though we have heard crashing things through the woods and seen nothing, um, apparently there are Bigfoot sightings at Skinwalker, and I didn't know that until uh, I saw that in the Skinwalker uh, film. Strange creature sightings at both locations, uh, disembodied voices, sounds of voices from above, ghost voices and all that stuff. In fact, there's a famous ghost house right near Location X, of a famous ghost house. Um, and of course, lots of strange light anomalies, lights shining out of the ground um, and weird other light anomalies, plus lots of orb sightings both locations have. So I thought that was interesting, James. I knew that both locations have all that stuff. A lot of UFO hotspots have a tendency to have a lot of these kind of phenomena uh, running alongside of them. So um, initially with the data project, we wanted to use Location X as a test area and then go to five different um, international locations. And, um, you know, if we're lucky enough at Location X, we'll get everything we need. We'll get multiple cameras and scientific equipment simultaneously recording one event with you know major witnesses and bring this evidentiary value to an encounter to this incredibly high level. Um, and if we're able to repeat that, that would be really, really, really amazing. And uh, we think we should be able to by all accounts. Our CE5 group uh, is back in the groove, so um, we will be uh, showing some interesting stuff soon, hopefully. And uh, in time, uh, we will get our schedule back in order. Um, our schedule fell out because I lost my corporate job and I was funding everything. And, um, you know, we have been uh, surviving now by um, being innovative and by your guys' love and support. And uh, we will soon, hopefully in December, early part of December, be able to dive back into that equipment list and get back going into some of our CE5 stuff at the farm. Mm-hmm. Anyway, gang, um, much love to you and yours.